$100, depending on what class you are talking about. Non-tiered classes have a rate of $222 a credit hour. So those would be more of your four classes. So just understand that our career technical education courses are bringing in more funding for our Kansas students than our non-tiered courses are. Okay, because I'm going to be talking a lot tonight about Kansas students and students that were, that are like Kansas residents and Bourbon County residents because they bring in more funding to our program. Um, and the last thing is it applies to Kansas students since this is kind of our federal going into our, our state. It does not apply to out-of-state students. Um, Turkins money, grant money, we also uh, apply to our program because we are career technical education. Um, the state of Kansas under the Perkins law brings in about $12 million to the, our state. And this money is split 50-50 with the Kansas um, <clears throat> Department of Education, so our K-12 institutions, and then the Kansas Board of Regents. And then that money gets distributed down to institutions that have Perkins eligible programs. And this Perkins money is all based on full-time Pell recipients. So Pell Grant recipients are kind of the key factor because I'll also be talking about Pell Grant because that brings our program in a little more money. Perkins funding was developed to be a supplemental program to provide classroom resources, materials, equipment to underserved populations. So that Pell Grant money or applying for Pell and receiving Pell Grant qualifies our program for underserved you know, socioeconomic status students. So just keep those two things in mind as we're rolling through this curriculum. Our funding is a little different and our, we qualify for Perkins funding as well. So as far as our teams, and I broke this down uh, because I wanted to show you guys some data. I'm the first person, I'm a very data-driven person and I have all the charts and data and tables. I thought it would be better for tonight, the purpose of tonight, to show you in more of my charts and graphs so that you can kind of wrap your mind around this. I took the last two years of data, so from our 2022 to 23 and 23 24 school year, and 53% of our ag team members qualify and receive Pell Grant money. So we encompass a lot of Pell Grant students in our program. You'll find that most of our students that take our courses are on an, a collegiate ag team. Okay. Um, because we are Perkins funded or get that extra Perkins money to spend on resources. And if you came to our ag social, you all saw maybe some of the resources that we were able to purchase the AI models, which the artificial insemination models, the reproductive models, things that help build those classroom resources for our students. Um, which are very important. We also have our ag agriculture advisory board that goes along. Um, it is a Perkins requirement to have an agriculture advisory board, which we would probably have one anyways, but we meet each semester and this advisory board, the goals and objectives are to drive decision-making within our program. So we talk about, are we relevant with our curriculum? Do we need to make changes to our curriculum to fit the needs of the job demand out in our career paths? Do we need to um, try to apply for different grants or get different resources or instructional material? Or do I need to go to a professional development that would help me become a better teacher in a certain area? <laughs> so our advisory board is made up of about 15, 12 to 15 individuals. I've listed them here in alphabetical order. You can see most of them are local in the industry to some degree and or our alumni from the program. So Katie Kasper, Chad Cross, Mitch Crystal, Sydney Pollison, Allie Griffin, Ethan Holly, Brian Holt, we ran with him in this year, um, Jeff Madison, Rachel Martin, Deb Russell, Jason Sutterby, myself, Scott Sutton, and Connor Vernon. So every ag educator in this county is on our advisory board, which we find very important because we work together to try to provide opportunities for students, as well as industry people and people who care, like I said, about this. Any questions so far on just the background of Perkins funding, CTE funding? 
Okay, I'm going to turn this over to Connor Vernon to talk about our curriculum and you know, I'm young, I don't know too much, it's super well, so bear with me. Uh, but I'm kind of breaking down the curriculum that we're going over nicely. We have four or two faculty, full time faculty members, and two adjuncts. So Chad Cross, Rachel Martin, and Sarah, as well as myself on there. Uh, we kind of deal with the educational purpose and the curriculum that we're going over. And the two main categories that we're going to kind of focus on uh, not associate or talking about the Associates of Science, we're primarily going to focus on a terminal degree in what we call a farm and ranch management certificate. So this is a certificate that can be taken for about a year and a half. Uh, it's a total of 39 credit hours. And once you look at that and you notice that basically only three of those hours are outside of the agricultural department or outside of the CTE realm in that principal of account. But this certificate should take about a year and a half to get finished. And with this certificate, it'll help go straight right into the kind of workforce, right? Now, I'd say some people kind of stretch a little bit longer than that for radio eligibilities, but we kind of like it for those purposes because we get to represent a lot of the nation on that side. And then the next one that we got is kind of a hybrid, uh, what I call between the Associates of Science and our certificate. This is our Farm Range Management Associate of Applied Science. Uh, this degree is a little bit more unique and has more credit hours. This first page is covering primarily the ad classes or the CPE courses that they're in. That accumulates up to 35 hours that primarily focus on the agricultural area. And the other hours that go into this consist of our general education when we're talking about English, physical education, public speech, and accounting. So that equates for 27. So we have 35 when it comes to our agricultural CPE courses, and then 27 for our general education. So we put those two kind of together or AAS for applied science. If you're looking at about 35 hours of CTE versus 27, which totals up to around 62 different hours, 62 hours in total, plus when we're talking about our certificate sitting there in the 30s. So I'd say a lot of our students go into this. Obviously, it's more geared towards our terminal degree because, like for my team, a lot of my students go on to four years. So an associate of science is probably the third year in course, but maybe a student that's trying to keep it for two years or figure out what they're going to do in the industry. This is a perfect opportunity. So all of these are transfer, let's say, K State. Yes, they could transfer to K State. Like the applied science, I would say, if a student wants to go to K State, they still can. They're just going to be a little bit behind due to those education, like the general education classes. But they probably need to have a little bit more science in there, kind of look, like a math in there, and depend upon their field. They can move this to a four years. Well, they're just going to be a little bit behind because they stack it heavier. Other act portions I would provide. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I apologize if I went fast. I don't want to be too too quick or too long. But Connor, what's the breakdown? I mean, do you have more people that go for the associates versus the certificate or yeah, we kind of have that judge weight on that. Oh, so, that, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Have, yeah, so we have the breakdown of very like, good. different degrees they kind of get into, and not only just act, but overall CIU yeah. courses. So you jumped to him. Sorry. No, you're good. Go. Hopefully that makes sense. Do we kind of have any questions about the curriculum kind of side? With that, next we're going to start off. Okay, yeah, I can start off. So we're going to dive into the team portion. And obviously our teams make up a huge component of our agricultural department. And the one that I oversee is the livestock judging team. So on the left-hand side, we see that is the 17 members that we have on the livestock judging team. They span from all over. We got a lot of Kansas kids as well as out of state students. And then there to the right are some of the successes that we had over this past year for that sophomore bunch going out to the other region. And just a little bit of fun facts about these teams. Uh, not only do I strive for them to be very talented in judging, we take pride in being good students. Uh, the average GPA for a freshman was a 355. Our sophomores were a 3 3, so that kind of totals up to a 3 4 5 overall. And most of those students are primarily focusing on associates of science. So, not very typical do they take the certificate or the AAS because most of these students were planning to go to the four year. They decided to come to junior college for the lifestyle changing experience and kind of want to. These kids travel all over. Uh, I require a lot for them, working their tails off to be successful, but they try and get back as well. Uh, this year, we've had multiple opportunities to do community service. Obviously, we do our Aggie Days this one. We had official contests for our local ag departments, whether it's uh, doing a dairy contest in the Southeast District or doing a Southeast District livestock judging contest. 
as well as we help out the Methodist Church here at the event. So we try and do maximum candy as best as possible, whether it's through a livestock judging camp or just us helping out with local farmers or anybody who needs it, we try and reach out to the students. So we had a lot of success over this year, pretty happy. They got their names bought out 94 times, uh, which was a lot more than three this year. So I say we're trying to make strides on that and make it better, uh, but we're pretty proud of this bit. Next up, uh, oh, I yeah, uh, forgot about the rosters there. So when we look at rosters, this is broken down between 22 to 24, uh, 32 members over that time frame. 81% of them are out of state, 19% in state. And obviously, I would say with a coaching change or just a personnel change over the past three to four years, even more, it's probably been harder and not as consistent in terms of our numbers. So Bourbon County with Kansas students, just because we're probably losing them to some. Kansas College that have had per minute more long standing coaches, so they built that relationship. So I'm trying to get that up, get more Kansas students in there, and obviously try to increase that number pretty good. Uh, but when we look at the actual courses that are taken by my students, since we kind of said they're focusing on the AS side of the Associates of Science, they take about 116 of the non CTE, and they take about 61 hours in the CTE credit hours. Uh, and that's probably because most of them are going to train or on to universities, so that's kind of our little issue that we got there with those, but most of them for their elective hours, they cram as many ag classes or CTE courses as possible in there. So it depends on them to watch those for years. Yep. Next up, we got the red Hey, Connor, can I get a quick yeah. one? Sorry. No worries. At the risk of jumping ahead in the presentation. No. Yeah. Um, who's, your, who's your competition when you're recruiting students? Can I say the nation? Uh, <laughs> I would say. It, it is challenging, not only just in Kansas, because I say Kansas and Oklahoma are probably one of the most prestigious livestock judging areas. Mm -hmm. I would say historically have been the two most competitive states. And just in Kansas alone, there's four schools I got to compete with. One's only an hour away, one's two hours away. And just dealing on the financial side, of trying to get those kids to come in. I remember I was a student, I got called by Ryan Page to come out to the school and I came and visited. And Obviously, circumstances are different, but those kids got 30 or 40 different colleges that have to decide between. <laughs> tell you this a lot of times, money is important, but it's all about the personnel that you got in there to try and get. But that money does make it a little bit nicer to get certain kids to go where you want. If you want a five star recruit, five stars want five stars. Uh, so, but I would say most of the time, natural. But I'd say we're going to get there. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm jumping down on the radio, but next up, we got. <laughs> I have no intentions to use it to click or not, I didn't really understand. I feel like that was Kelly, Miss Kelly, and I are the Rogue Team coaches, and we worked really hard to put together a really good set of kids this year. Uh, we're about 50 strong. We still go on the same presumption that they're going to come here to learn about life, school, and rodeo in that order. We get to order a little bit cute, but that's the order we ask for all the time. Uh, we're having a great year. I'm not writing it. I don't chase it. Uh, I'm just telling them we're right in the middle of something that's special. Uh, we don't want to go talk about it much simply because we have 40% of it in the next 45 days. We just got them with our rodeo. Uh, very pleased to keep working their butts off for us. Uh, we bring about $400,000. Uh, really simple. We just ask them for all the help we can get, and we just need the tools to keep them on the road. I can go over these a little bit. Uh, as far as our rodeo team members go, we are 7% from Bergen County. 32% uh, of those kids are Kansas. So we're about almost 40% of Kansas kids coming back from the rodeo program and 61 out of state. Um, occasionally we'll have a kid that out for a year because of injury or something, and a lot of those kids seem to stick around and become Kansas coaches. So uh, sometimes that number grows a little bit. And our CTE hours are pretty heavy. I would say uh, majority of our students are taking ag classes, and then right after that, welding classes or nursing classes, or those heavily loaded CTE classes. So we're pretty heavy, 560 CTE hours versus 218 non CTE hours. Question for Chad. Any idea how many rodeo alums stay in the community? You used to keep a number on that. I think this case is going to talk about that. Okay. But no, that, oh, no, no, I, I don't want to jump ahead of her, but I would say that we counted 60 families 
they're, they're in this immediate area that came to hear a real force and stay. Uh, and I think that's a pretty safe number. Other questions? Thank you, guys. And then I'll round things out. I'm talking about meat judging teams. The meat judging team has had a really awesome spring. Uh, we are a little different. We start our contest season on a calendar year versus a school year. So my freshman team, which is made up of all Kansas students, um, they have an amazing run since January. One of our biggest highlights and accomplishments was winning the Four Wars contest which is an extremely prestigious thing to do and keeps our program on the map. Um, and, and so we, we go to the four or five contests from January until the beginning of March. We just got done wrapping up our season for this semester. So it's really go, go, go time. I, I don't think I can prepare them enough until they actually get in the van and we are gone more in January than we are home. Um, but it's very short. It's how they are. We, we have to go where the contests are, and they're kind of scheduled around these big livestock shows, shows and groups. Um, but we are, sorry, now I'm going to get these all confused. So um, from my two-year statistics, that is not my two-year statistics. Uh, my two-year statistics, uh, I have had an extremely high percentage, over 90% of Kansas students and um, a couple, my numbers aren't as big, but I have an extremely high number of Kansas students. Me judging is a little different. It's not necessarily the cool thing to do. Lifestyle judging and rodeo judging is a little more um, interesting, but my program or the meat judging program here is directly tied to industry. A lot of people don't understand what we do as a meat judger. Well, we learn industry standards uh, that the United States Department of Agriculture sets and other entities set, we learn those standards and we go and do those things literally almost shoulder to shoulder with USDA graders and inspectors as they are practicing. And so my, not that other teams here are not directly tied to the industry, but this is one that is very directly tied to the industry. Some of my students choose to go on and pursue that and some do not, um, but it's, it's a little unique because it is very, very tied to industry. My students are a little mixed, uh, as far as, once again, these are Kansas credits, because ultimately, you know, our out-of-state students, just for funding purposes, aren't generated, generating us credit our money. So that's what we focus on for this presentation. My students are kind of in the middle. I get students that will go take our certificate with just mainly CTE hours in our department. I have some students who want to go on to a four-year I have some that do our Associate of Applied Science. So my program is very a mix of you know, career or degree paths. Any questions on the meat judging side of things? So you start to refer to the year. So how many weeks do you go to? We can go five in the spring and four in the fall. Okay. Ours are not as, it's very expensive to put on a meat judging contest. And we have to go where the meat is. And so we're dealing with mainly carcasses and wholesale cuts like a USDA. Um, someone that most of the USDA would look at, where when you get into high school, they do the retail cuts like you would see at the grocery store. We don't do any of that. Ours is all grading purposes, quality, yield grade, going over priority trades. Um, so where do you go to practice? <laughs> so to so practice, I know I've had to talk to, with Dr. Pegler about where we go to practice. To get a good practice in, we go to the mall. When I was a student here in the meat judging program in the early 2000s, um, Emporia was still slaughtering. They don't slaughter anymore. And so we need, we go into plants that have a floor larger than this whole building. And it's nothing but beef purposes after beef purposes after beef purposes. Because to get the best practice in, my kids need to see a thousand ribeyes to be able to feel great properly and quality rate properly. So we can run to our normal mom and pop store down the down the street, which is great to start off with, but ultimately we need a little more um, quantity when we go to get real practices. And then universities, places with these labs uh, provide classes. We go to we go to a variety of different universities on the judging team. 
Colorado State, Texas Tech, Texas A&M, the University of Nebraska, University of Wyoming, Colorado State University, Iowa State University. We did all of those places. But those are usually done when you're there for correct. correct. We don't go there. No, we don't maybe go to KC or OSU because they're a little closer. Yeah, the uh, but the others are before contests mm -hmm. and are located around those contests. So it's only one travel expense. Correct. It is only one travel expense. And it's a great indirect benefit for my students because I have had students that didn't know some of these universities even existed. And because of me judging, they went on to go to those universities. So indirectly, they we are giving them experiences that they might not have had. So they get on campuses, in campus uh, facilities, get to talk to instructors, we love to do more out and about. So any other questions? Um, just to throw that out of this competition, because we talked a little bit about the competition, we compete against everyone as well. The University of Georgia is in our division. And so from two-year institutions to four-year institutions and anywhere in between, we compete against everyone. So there's two divisions, but in ours, we still have some divisions. Okay, I thought we would throw these together and talk about combined team information. And sorry, standing in the way. So combining our three collegiate teams because they do play a role. And if you all at one point in time would like us to come back and present just on our teams, we would love to do that in a short presentation just about our teams. Yeah. We can't talk about our program, our curriculum without our teams. Um, so hopefully that was a little snippet of, of each one of them. So this is combined with all ag team members. We have um, over 40% Kansas students within our teams. Here is uh, maybe what you were asking for, Ryan, on where do those kids go into, or our team members go into to focus on their curriculum while they are here. We have a really high percentage of our, a, the AS is Associate of Science, and then the DASH, and then that's what their focus is on. So agriculture, we have a lot of students who are here, that's our transfer pathway. They're choosing to focus on their first two years of college here, and we'll go on to a university, but they're focused in agriculture. The next one is our Farm and Ranch Management Associate of Applied Science, probably has the next largest number. Um, that is our program within our department. Our Farm and Ranch Management Certificate is next, so that's kind of to be expected, those three. But then it kind of gets interesting where our students choose to spend their time in the classroom, and we have a lot of welding students. Um, as the rodeo team and coaches explained, we have a lot of our students who will go and do our welding program for a year first. And then they come into our department, which they're technically you always consider them our people, but they come into our department and take curriculum from us. And we actually can get those students in career technical education programs on campus for three years. Um, some of them might even stay a little longer. And we can, <laughs> if we can figure it out, we do. We have, we have, we have a couple of super sophomores, they don't want to leave. Um, but if we can get them here and they're great students, and especially for Kansas students, um, then we want to keep them. But pre-nursing, nursing, masonry, uh, criminal justice, we have a little bit of variety uh, throughout the rest of our the, the programs our students are choosing to go into. Um, so once again, another pie chart here, but all of our teams in CTE pathways, and this is all CTE pathways across our whole institution, because I also think that's all, that is important to bring up because we are bringing in a very high percentage of career technical education students, even if they're not in our math program, they are choosing to spend their time in other career technical education programs on our campus. So the pie chart on the left, is showing the blue is the CTE pathway. That could be cosmetology, that could be welding, that could be our program. The crossover pathways are what I consider our associate of science that are choosing to spend all of their electives in our program that we are getting funding for, even though they are not getting a degree from our program specifically, they are still here taking a good majority. I, for this purpose, it was 12 hours or more in that pathway. And then only 7% of our team is it not taking CTE credits. 
And I think that's very important as we go forward and as a board that you need to be aware of because our program and the students that we are bringing in are generating income for this institution. And ultimately in the, the situation that we are in today, I think that is very important. That's why we are focusing on Kansas students and CTP pathways. So the, the one on the right is just showing you what percentage those are coming out. Everything on the right is a CTP pathway. So cosmetology, welding, nursing, masonry, criminal justice, now, <laughs> um, is a CTE or career technical education. So even though our students might not be in our department specifically, they are taking career tech and classes. Any questions on that? So all in all of our whole team, and this is just Kansas students, this is not even our, our other credits, our other students that we have on our teams, 852 credit hours over the last two years from Kansas students are in career technical education programs. So if you think back to the beginning of this, anywhere from 250-ish dollars all the way up to 500 and some odd dollars per credit hour our students are generating. And our non-CTE credits are still getting the $220, $22 credit hour. So you, you can kind of do the math on that quickly and see that we are generating uh, quite a bit of revenue. I didn't want to put numbers on there because of the tiered system. Gina and I talk a lot about this and I didn't want to misspeak. So I just wanted to let you see that a number of Kansas CTE credit hours that we have generated just in the last few years. Any questions on that? I know it's a lot. Um, okay. Non-team data. So these are this can be information about students who are not on a team, but taking more than 12 hours and are full-time in our department. We've had 11 over the last two years. That's five, maybe six per year that come to this institution just to take Farm and Ranch Management or Farm and Ranch Management, the Certificate for the Associate of Applied Science, or are an AS Agriculture major, five or six each year. Why is this important? Because if we don't have our teams, we don't have an ag curriculum at this institution. And we are very unique. This program is very unique because our teams drive the credit enrollment in our program. And without that, without supporting our teams, we can't get students here. Any questions on this? The good news is for the non-team members, they are generally here for like our certificate and our Associate of Applied Science. So they do generate a lot of CTE credit hours, we need to get uh, better at trying to recruit a non-team member as well as more team members. <laughs> but that's a focus that, you know, something that we can improve upon and have thought about over the years. How do we generate more students? Our problem is just about every credit that we teach, you can take online in Allen County. Connor said students have 5 million different choices of where to take credit hours from. They come to our department with the experiences that they are getting and being on teams. Okay, financial data. I also want to take in on this a little bit, and it's not a complete financial rundown. For the purposes of this presentation, I wanted to really focus on areas that we thought and our advisory board thought of were concerns over the years. And since we get to kind of voice our opinion this evening, you can see this. I took the 2016 date because that's about as far as I could get um, information back from with what time we were working with. And then the budgeted information that we had at the beginning of this school year. And I know things have changed since then, but I also wanted you to understand that the budgeted information were determined by administration. And we turn in our budgets at the end of every school year, kind of at the springtime, we're getting ready to probably turn those budgets in. And those budgets, we, we hope that they are what we turn in, but they are not, they are not. So livestock, meat, and rodeo travel for our teams. You can see um, the meat and the livestock travel has gone down quite a bit. 
um, which is concerning to us when we are trying to recruit and with this high of Kansas enrollment as we bring, it's very disheartening for our program to see that. Our rodeo travel has not increased much. This is a eight year growth. $3,500 is not a lot of increase when fuel prices have increased. Um, I stayed in a $38 hotel room this winter along with my students and my team members. Um, we'll sleep six to a room when we have to, to make things work. We don't feed our students like some programs, and I'm not here to talk about badly about anybody's program. I'm trying to be very transparent. We do not get food money the way that other programs on campus get food money. Um, Rodeo team doesn't pay for really any food money or travel money unless you are part of the enrollment team. So I want you to really let these numbers sink in because it's very hard for us to do what we need to do in our department when others have opportunities maybe that we don't have and we see decreases in certain areas. Our recruiting, Connor, Herman, and I have a recruiting budget that is lumped together with our department and our meat and livestock training team. It's extremely difficult to do when that budget has decreased. And barn expense, I teach an ultrasounding class that started off as a meat quality class, and they would purchase hogs and keep them out at the Martin's barn. And when I was hired on here, I was told that I could not do that anymore, but I still needed to teach the class. And it's an ultrasound, you use the ultrasound machine and you scan swine, the loin eyes to check the quality and it's very prevalent in our industry. But I was told I still needed to do that with no money and no budget to teach that. The rodeo supplies, I don't know if you have watched pay prices over the last few years, the supplies on the rodeo team have not increased much compared to other programs that this institution has. It is very difficult for them to do what they need to do with pay prices and grain prices because those supplies aren't, so those are just day-to-day -day supplies that are needed for them to have practices. Um, Coach Cross, their program has the same tractor. I'm coming up on my 20th year anniversary. The same tractor that has been here since I was here. And I think it was in just as bad a shape <laughs> so just to be 100% honest, it's very difficult when we, we've seen, we're on the second gym floor. I've been here six years and we've had two different gym floors, but we can't get what we need to make things work. We're great at doing things on a shoestring budget. The ag community is wonderful at that. But it's getting to the point where it's becoming extremely hard. Our instructional supply, this is supply money that should be going to our students sitting in our classrooms. That extra CTE funding that we receive should be going back into our program. That is, that's why we get extra funding because those programs cost more to run, right? It's not, and I hate to say just an English class because there is a lot that goes into English. But if you came over to my building, we have a ton of models. We have a ton of resources that provide hands-on opportunities for our students. I'm not sure why our budget keeps decreasing. When our enrollment has decreased, it's, but we are bringing in CTE money to this program. Any questions? Once again, there's more that goes into our financials. These were just some very um, disheartening things to see as a coach and a faculty member in this department. I didn't catch uh, how many uh, rodeo students do we have? I'd say 45 right now. 45. Mm -hmm. And I would say our numbers are maybe a little low. I'm, I I can use a few more. I think we could all use a few more. It goes in recruiting, you know, goes in ups and downs. Yeah. We're not in a bad spot, but we're not in an amazing spot either on the recruiting. I would say, is that accurate? Okay. Any other questions on the budget? Okay. 
Uh, we just a couple more things. Uh, some of our board members, advisory board members, wanted to say a few things. So, Katie Nasper is going to come up and speak, and then Scott Sutton will also speak. I'm going to try to not stand in everyone's way. My name is Katie Casper. For those of you that don't know me, I am, my family is the perfect example of the broad spectrum of students of what Sarah and Coach and everyone has talked about tonight. Um, I am a 2002 graduate of FSCC. I was on the HW team. I went on to Oklahoma State University and received a degree in agribusiness finance. I learned about Oklahoma State University on the HW team at Fort Smith Community College. I then went to the U.S. Department of Agriculture for 11 years before I came back to work at the State Bank. My husband got a degree in radio. <laughs> <laughs> he then broke it professionally for 11 years before he started his own construction trades business here in Fort Scott. Um, so what I want to talk about is it's very important to think about what these programs do for the institution, but it's even more important, not more important, but just as important as a community college to think about what these programs do for our community. And there's two um, unique ways that these programs enhance the economy of our county. Um, last weekend, as Coach mentioned, we had the Fort Scott Community College Spring Road. And that's four days of 450 contestants from 25 schools coming into our community. Each one of those people is driving, well, almost all of them are driving their own vehicle. I'd say more than half of them, their parents are following them here. <laughs> they're staying in hotel rooms, they're eating every meal out, and um, they're shopping in our in our stores, in our downtown, in our in the south of town. Um, like Coach said, it's almost a half a million dollar impact on our local economy. I'm not really sure there's any other event that happens in Fort Scott that can say that. And it's every year. It's been every year. Um, next, this Friday, the Ag Department is hosting Fort Scott Adams. And that's an event that's been happening since I was in high school and before that. And they're going to have 1,200 to 1,300 Ag students from 80 to 100 schools coming onto our campus from four different states. Um, they're here from 7.30 to 3 in our community. They're here all day long, and the community college does not feed them. And they're filling up their buses with fuel. Um, and it's a great learning opportunity that we provide for high school students. My, my two daughters are participating in it. They don't have to drive from very far, but I can tell you that they're going to want to eat out because they don't have to go back to the school to do that. Um, and so the second thing, those are two events that bring in more students than any anything else I can think of in the community. I could be wrong, but I think those are that's probably pretty close to two of the top top events. The second thing, and coach um aged me because this came out of my head of the people that I know that have come here to rodeo or be in the ag department and become residents of our county. And I came up with this one for so that tells me it's been a while since I was in school here. But so this is a 30% example of what the, the actual numbers are. I did my research on Bourbon County's um, website where you can find out what they pay in real estate taxes. 20 families from nine states that didn't come here for any other reason pay almost $88,000 in real estate taxes in our county each year. 52 children that go through USC 234 or 235 from these families. Eight businesses. Eight businesses. And this isn't even like an all encompassing thing because it doesn't show you for things like Frank Casper, my father in law, who moved here to work for his son and the arts. We're not the only story like that. Um, I would like for you to reflect and think about any other programs, activities programs, athletics programs at this institution that can say those things. I would love to know if there's another one because it would be very interesting to know that. Um, taking that into consideration, I'm gonna, these guys don't brag enough about the programs. Uh, I'm just to talk first about a rodeo program, which Gary Harvey's here in the room. He helped start all of our agricultural programs. But in the last 40 years, our rodeo program has had two coaches. Two coaches. In 27 years of Coach Cross being here, there's been one year other than COVID 
that he did not take a contestant to the college national final program. The men's team, which is six people, to the college national final rodeo, you have to be either number one or number two in the Central Plains region. There are over 25 schools in the Central Plains region. Coach Cross has done that over a dozen times. And Kelly, I'm not leaving you now, Kelly. I know you're an important part of that too. And I know not everybody knows what that means, but the CFR is like the NCAA tournament for rodeo. And we have a national champion of ever in this school, a national champion. Um, and Coach has a facility that was built by the volunteer hours of his team members, his alumni. He's got a tractor that you have to roll up to the top of the hill to start to get it to go down. A welder that doesn't maybe work all the time, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He's going to kick me for saying all these things. But I just feel like he does what he, he's a little bit to blame for this because he gets the most out of what he's given. My husband is a perfect example of that. That he had as a student way back then. Our livestock judging teams, our meat judging teams, they have coaches that are also full time teachers. You heard Connor talk about how competitive recruiting is. He has to do that in his family. So I guess I'm asking you, as a taxpayer in this county, as an alumni of this institution, when you're looking at programs, when you're just making decisions on where to spend money, I'd say that these programs are something that you're getting a great return on your investment. I would ask that you would consider investing in them what they have consistently demonstrated that they deserve. Well, I know we've gone way over time, so I'll apologize on behalf of that, but I do feel like this is important information for y'all to hear, as well as all of our supporters. And I'm, it's kind of unique, Katie and I are very similar, and we're both four Scott High School graduates. We both came to community college. I was on the live shot judging team here between 2002 and 2004. She met a rodeo boy at Marion. I met a rodeo girl, and then I married her. And so you can thank me for your current department head. <laughs> Um, I'm here tonight as a representative, like Katie, of the Ag Advisory Board. Uh, I mentioned I'm a graduate from here and a member of the Livestock Fishing Team. I've grown up in this county for the last 38 years. I'm the Ag Instructor at the Fay Advisor at Uniontown High School. Uh, I'm going to read a lot on my, my notes just because I want to keep this relatively brief since we are over time. Um, I've been a part of this board for the last six years and I've watched the budget decrease annually. Uh, the only improvement that I'm aware of, besides I think the self-funded uh, rodeo office that I believe they raised uh, did privately on their own, um, is the, the bigger balloon ag ball, which was a private donation. So we all understand that money didn't come directly from college from the donor. Um, aside from that, I want to now that I'm not here to attack any programs or any any other person on this campus. I'm just concerned that as a stakeholder in our ag department, uh, I want you guys to consider what's being presented to you tonight. And as this college tries to stabilize over the next couple of years, I hope you'll consider investing in these programs that you've heard about tonight. I think most would argue in this community that agriculture is the backbone of the Bergen County. Uh, it's been a staple on this campus since 1975 when Gary Harvey started the program. And the Rodeo Livestock and Meat Judgment Team provide opportunities for students to get an education just as athletics do. So I know I've heard some arguments with the uh, sports talk over the last few years and some uh, controversies that, you know, this provides students an opportunity to get an education. The Ag Program do as well. Uh, I know a lot of people are unfamiliar with Ag Department teams like Rodeo Livestock and Meat Judging. But I'm here to promise you the teams that compete on the competition they partake in are just as relevant and as important as any other competitive team here at FSCC. Livestock judging paved the way for me to compete at the next level on Kansas State University's livestock judging team. And then because of that experience, I'm able to supplement my income every year as a poor ag teacher by going out and judging livestock shows and getting paid to be a professional judge just as Katie's husband got paid for several years to be a professional rodeo athlete. And so there are opportunities professionally that extend 
not just the direct paths that come from the meat department. Um, you will find that a large majority of our students who go through these programs do at some point earn professional income from these experiences. The biggest area of concern for me as an advisory board member has been brought to my attention over the last several years and something I've done a little deeper in in preparation for this meeting. And that's the drastic difference in support which college provides to students who are involved in college athletic programs versus students involved in agriculturally based competitive events. For the intent of this conversation, I'm considering rodeo as part of the ag department, as I'm hopeful they will soon be under that umbrella here at the college and no longer part of the athletic program. I sat down recently with this budget report that I have in my hand and started to crunch some numbers, and there were some eye-opening things that I was drawn to that I want to point out this evening. For the 2023-24 budget year, and that's where that budget book, and I realized that may not be 100% accurate of what actually occurs. But FSCC budgeted approximately $1.6 million for athletic programs. And you can buy all the sports programs along with the general sports fund. And I actually left out about $150,000 in athletic training because I do know the radio team does utilize those services. So $1.6 million for athletics. The budget, when you take out the two teaching salaries, which I feel is only appropriate because they're teaching students, that's not their coaching salary. The budget for the ag department, including rodeo, livestock, and needs is $234,000. I spent time on the FFCC website compiling numbers for each team in the athletic program, and I found that the athletic program supports about 230 students, whereas the ag department, on average, we figured supports about 90 to 95 students a year. So when you simply take that budgeted money divided by the number of participants, it can give you an idea of how much support this college provides athletic students versus ag competitive students. And I'll just give you the quick math. According to those numbers, and I know they may be approximate, uh, probably bust approximately $2,500 per rodeo livestock or meat judging student. $2,500. If you take the $1.6 million divided by approximately 230 athletes, you're talking $7,000 per athletic student. So supporting an athletic student that's a rate of nearly $7,000 a year and an ag student at $2,500. So the way I read that is, is that if we're, I'm a gambler, I feel like seeing on place in blackjack. So if I'm walking in and buying chips for myself, the athletic student's getting a $100 stack, and whereas I'm over here coming and getting about a $35 stack, and that's what we get to play with. And so I just feel like there's some inequity uh, in those numbers. So I'm going to close things up here. I know the college is currently trying to stabilize budgets and get back on a stable financial track. And I realize that it's not the time to go and start throwing money at programs. But as you all plan for the future, I hope you'll consider the information presented tonight and the value that our agricultural program brings to the college and just as importantly, the community. I love sports as much as anyone, but I also love and know the value of these competitive agricultural teams and it feels time to treat them like they might. This is last slide, and just in closing, I want to say thank you to all of the community members, students, stakeholders that uh, came tonight to support our program. I hope this was an eye opening experience for you all. Because just as uh, some have said, this program, the programs that we have are very hard to do with the amount of support that we have. We are wonderful at doing things on a shoestring budget, but we are generating dollars for this institution that other programs are not. So I encourage you to look at when we are looking at where we do want to spend money, we bring in an extremely high percentage of Kansas students Kansas students who receive Pell Grant money and are sitting in CTE programs. That should not be the only reason or the little pot of money that we get, because if you look at the athletics, you won't find as high of percentages of those that are there. So please keep that in mind as we go through this. It's getting harder and harder for us to do what we need to do to stay competitive. 
And we want to get a game plan at some point in time to say, hey, we can think about new facilities or updates to facilities, even if it's not brand new facilities. Maybe we can replace some things that were welded back in 1981 with new things. It's very hard to do and keep our spirits up when we see things around campus and other areas of this institution, the unequal distribution of support. Any questions that you have for us? Question. Yes. You mentioned a while ago that in this semester you submit a budget request. Yes, sir. How close I, is it to what you get? It is not close. Oh, okay. yeah. And it hasn't been since I've been here. And what happens when I go over budget is they take it from me. They will go into my booster money that I have raised for my team without documentation, and this is how it's been done in the past, just to be 100% transparent. No documentation and say, I need to take $2,800 from your account, and they take it. I'm hoping that will change. I'm hoping that we have the right people in place, that those types of practices don't happen. But I've turned in budgets that reflect truly what I need, and I don't receive that. And we're still staying six to a room on the budget that I turned in. Yeah. Any other questions? Do you have any new programs you're thinking about getting started or new ideas that are exciting? Yes. That is a whole other conversation. <laughs> On the lighter side of things, um, yes, over the years we have generated some amazing ideas. Um, a meat processing facility of some sort has been tossed around for numerous years at this institution and been turned down. You've been there and brought back down and have been there and then brought back down kind of last minute to my understanding. Um, that is always on the forefront. I think that will set us apart in this area. We've talked about an equine program to generate more students that could come. Um, honestly, I was the 17, 18 year old girl that wanted to come to college with her horse and her dog. And you know, there we would have people lining up to, to do that. I know that's not the top of the list for some to share facilities that are already not quite big enough, but we have some great ideas that we have tried to bring, but have been turned down on previously. Any other questions? We would love to talk about new programs. And it, and it, that's the other side of it too. It gets really hard when we have brought things to the table and we've been turned down and turned down and turned down for the years. That's why I brought it up. I wanted you to end on a positive note. Yes, yes. <laughs> we have wonderful ideas. Um, just want to make sure that we can, if we're going to take the time and energy to build a plan, that maybe this time it's actually followed through on. How many students in rodeo and the total agriculture? How many students? Um, the students. Yeah. Are you talking about all the students or the program? Yeah, 90, 95 ish. Yeah. How much? 90 to 95. That, in, that includes the 11 that you, that you mentioned. That, that would be all, yes. Okay. Yes, sorry, we went over time. It took a lot of your time. We appreciate it. Thank you for, for listening. Please don't apologize. Thank you all for your yes, thank this you has all. been awesome. <laughs>
Okay, well, that was very enlightening. Let's move into the consent agenda, uh, which includes uh, item A, approval of the agenda, item B, approval of minutes, previous regular board meeting conducted on February 19th, and special board meeting conducted on February 29th. Uh, item C, approval of bills and claims. Item D, ratification of contracts. Uh, item D1, the Tri Valley Shredding Agreement. And item D2, the Osawatomie State Hospital Agreement for Clinical Training. And item E, approval of personnel actions. Before we get into the approval, I'd like to make a motion to add to the agenda the action items. Item J uh, regarding the April board meeting date. I want to add that as item J under the action items, uh, the April board meeting date. I think we need a second to add that. I'll second. Thank you, John. Julie, would you call the roll, please? Baby. Yes. Arnold Meyer. Yes. 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 McKinnis. Yes. Rob. Yes. And with that change, we can title it a motion to approve the consent agenda for any questions. There are no questions on this. I need John. No, sir. Thank you. Julie, would you call for the vote? Arnold Smyre. Yes. Evans. Yes. Holt. Yes. McKinnis. Yes. Rob. Yes. Bailey. Yes. That moves us into the discussion item starting on page 40. And the first one is item A, first reading of policies. That the table we present all of you. Sure. Um, what we again, what we've decided that we would do is we would start making sure that our policies are uh, aligned with current practices and even some title changes. And so, um, again, each month we're going to present four or five policies to you um, for the first meeting. Um, and then the following month, we will approve those. So you'll have an opportunity to look over those you know, those policies uh, over the next month or so, and then we'll come back and review. I have a question on page 43. Um, uh, fees. The outside organizations, fees and non FSCC organizations, does nonprofit forty dollars for profit fifty dollars. Is that per day or is that per? Uh, for example, the Arts Council had this uh, the art contest or art show. Did, did they pay this per day or is that for the entire? I'm I'm not sure, Gina. Do you know? I, be, I believe it's I believe it's for the event. Okay, I, I believe it's for that. I think that should be clarified. Sure, uh, because as it is, it doesn't say. Okay. And other than that, I have no more questions on this. Okay, I did uh, forty. Page forty. Page forty. Yeah, forty. Uh, this is forty. For the teacher to come in. Uh, I know. Vice President of Finance. When we had our chart, I didn't see that on there. So are we going, is that a, I thought it was CFO. Well, what, what, are we, what do we have there? I'm getting a little confused on both we'll, tiles. That will be clarified and will be um, CFO. Where's that up for you? 
Uh, well, it's underneath each one of them there, like on B, B. and on D, both. Okay. So that will be that won't be vice president of finance. It will be CFO. Okay. I believe that the title, the official title, and there's the working title, and so both of those are on the position description as the official title, and then there's a working title uh, of all of those. But we'll change that to make sure that it's. I, I just was concerned that you had stated it another time, which I didn't think was from you know, HLC, but maybe so that too many vice presidents. Mm -hmm. So any other questions on the purchasing policy, the travel expenses policy, college vehicle use, guidelines for use of FSCC facilities. Okay, I had a question on purchasing. Okay. Um, it said three work days. All right. So that would mean like last two weeks ago, Friday, the very last work day for spring break. Right? I was looking see where which one was that. That was um, Friday. Yeah. The chat request to call her three days early and this kind of three work days. Uh, I know for recruiting, spring break is a really big thing for me. And sometimes I would have a, a somebody say, you know, if you would come to our school this day and work our band, you know, and it was on spring break, it's like, okay. And I realized I could take my own car. Uh, but again, we had all the, right? I think that makes more work. I don't know. I, because if you have to wait three days to get okay for a car, sometimes that's a little hard. I don't. If you're talking about the very last line of number two, travel expenses. What page that? Four one. Here, this. Uh, that's this. this right. Yes. <laughs> well, keep going. Yep. I took my page off. You said look at all this. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's that's of course that's you have to turn in your receipts within three days of the trip. That's are you talking about under number two, yeah. the last sentence? Yeah. Okay. Responsible employee will turn in all receipts and travel expenses from the business to the business office within three working days. So that that includes that would not include spring break. So I would have two more days after I got back. Okay. But what if I needed a car? I'd have to just put in my own, do my own. If I needed a car over spring break, the same thing because I had had directors call me like on Monday and say we here on Thursday. Sure, you know I'm not going to turn it off a chance to go. I don't think that I don't see it creating any requirement to get it. There's some time, but by the time you get it all done, it ends up being just about that because it has to go through so many people. If if the column is closed, it, I mean we'll have to. I don't know that we will be readily available to. For example, okay. I think I think our logistics director was out of town during spring break this week, this month, or this last week. And so if there's a vehicle request that comes in prior to us leaving, the house closing, then I think they'll have the keys there yes. for okay. Yes. Okay. And is it possible, you know, to, to, that should be is the turnaround requesting a car pretty fast, is what I'm asking. Oh, I don't think that there's I I I would have to ask employees, but I don't know that there's been a overwhelmingly high frustration with the ability to get a vehicle once once it's been requested. Okay. But you're saying if you get a last minute request during spring, yeah, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that would be on me. I have to do that myself. But then forget about the spring break thing. Let's go back onto this though. If you used to we were able to just go through the director of logistics. This reason we have to go through the vice president and the director of logistics. Uh, because I remember we requisitioned off the computer and we had two things there. You know, and we just we filled out your absence or whatever, and you filled out your for the log logistics, and you go up and you just get your keys. So I just I was wanting because recruitment is very important to make sure that we get 
streamline that as much as we could. That's what I was asking there. So uh, a lot of red tape to get it goes quick you say so we're well, I, I think it goes pretty quickly, but I think what what's gonna need to happen on those special situations like this where it's kind of a last minute thing, I think there's gonna have to be some communication between logistics, but then with the immediate supervisor, VP or does it be that hey this is I, I, this just kind of came up and could we could we push this through and I think people tend to respond to that. Okay, another question I have on Great Western Dining. If uh, it's on page uh well it's crossed out there uh, it's on renting the building. Oh, oh it said number six on page 42 or seven. Yeah. Um if let's say Brian decides to hold his the bank's Christmas party here. Do they have to use Great Western? Yes. Okay. So an off-campus person does too. Okay. Great Western gets the pass exclusivity. And so okay. they can choose to turn it away. Um, but they get first right of refusal. Okay. And then you and know, that's written in their contract with us. All right. And then the other one, where was it? I should have written down the numbers better about the guns and alcohol on campus. <laughs> Number 11 says 43. alcohol and firearms are not allowed on FSCC campus facilities or property. Does that mean for any entity? No, that does not mean for any entity. Um, alcohol by policy can be used in, can be housed in this facility or around this facility by the alcohol folks. That, go ahead. Well, it's this here when they pass that exemption from the alcohol policy. Uh -huh. Alcohol policy, and then there's an exemption from the alcohol policy. And, right? That's and I'm asking, because we've had so much confusion over I before. think the, the, you have to apply, no, that's only if we're serving. Forgive me. Okay, so the firearms thing that came up several years ago. Yeah. That's the, that's the state of Kansas actually. Yeah. Said that that was not to be allowed. No, they, they said it was their direction. Oh, so they can prohibit it. Excuse me. The state, state said you cannot prohibit it. Is that what you mean? Yes, I, I remember that distinctly because. In, well, especially brought Nelson brought it up, said we do not need guns on campus, but it was a state authorized thing. Well, I know we have we we have some on campus. I know that we, we have, have the, the we have the exemption of the concealed carry in the state of campus where it was uh, we, have, we have a, a policy in place that is uh, it's pretty plain. Uh, that they did put in place probably 2019 somewhere. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so that would be an exemption to this uh, if it's fallen under the concealed carry. Yeah, that's what I was kind of worried about. It seems so black and white on here. I don't like it, and I don't like the period of it. If it's not anything to do with that, but I know. No, we can't. Unless we get armed guards and adequate security measures at every door. Yeah, so I had students with in class. Mm -hmm. So what, they does have that, the what does that mean for the item 11 there, page 43? Um, we'll probably remove, um, we'll probably split out firearms and just say, uh, you know, usage of facility will be, you'll need to make yeah. follow the state law because that will prevent yeah. that. Yes. That's what I don't like it anymore than anybody else does. But, so people um want to table this and tell it. Well, no, you were you were, you were yeah, this person in the university. Okay, this so this is okay. this is exactly what this was for. Okay, I might just. One note that I had on here is on the bottom of page 43 under the agricultural facilities. Um, the 
during business hours is $75 for for profit, and the after is also $75. I didn't know what it should be. Usually, I assume after is usually higher because you're having a staff member that has to be present or something like that. So yeah, if they're supposed to, the, it's supposed to be the same, but fine. I just didn't want to. Well, if there's an additional forty dollar charge for nonprofit, so we should probably increase the. Well, that's yeah, that's what I'm. Mean. <laughs> Any other question? The first reading of the policy is you mentioned. Okay. That doesn't provide a item B. This is on page 45, the honorary degree. Um, I will be emailing to you um, a, a set of requirements. Uh, Julie had sent that to me, and I did that sent to you guys. Um, the, for the honorary degree, which will need to be uh, that's board driven. And so uh, we I would probably suggest that the board this you guys decide a couple people who would be able to make that determination uh for who the when we can send it. I'll send all of that information to you all, but um probably have a couple of people work, work on that. I think they have to do has to be a full board decision, but I think that's up to you guys how you want to do it. Okay. When does that decision need to be made? We'll need to make it because if we have to make arrangements for the person to travel, sure. Um, but it'll need to be uh, probably for the next board meeting, but most definitely. Okay. So if, if you guys want to decide a couple of you or however you want to do that, I don't know that. But that's the something that we can do here. No? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Just not all six of you emailing. Six of you. Okay. I got you. Because then you get into help. Got you. We'll figure that out. <laughs> Item C, uh, graduation ceremony on page six. Just need, uh, need to know who's planning to be at graduation. And those dates are. May 11th. May 11th. May 11th. And it'll be in the morning. Yes. Well, nice. So we can break that up into two sections. Yes, the first one is going to be a nine-dollar next one's gift, and then we have the the reception in the middle. We just need to get chairs and um, maybe um, corsages or. Well, what the orders, and that's what I'm going to pass on for a visit with each of you that I don't have the information on. I'm sorry, I didn't know your other. Um, Courtney will have to order the regalia. You do like regalia. Well, it's hard not to lie. <laughs> Are we going to have a outstanding alumni and outstanding student? Sophomore, that's yes. maybe so. Okay, yes. oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 So just like you don't have to publicly declare yeah, yeah, sure. what you're doing. If you could shoot me an email, maybe by Courtney's really um, 
she's carrying a large part of the weight of the J1 transition too, so she's trying to get as organized as she can possibly be in preparation for. Um, maybe by the end of the month, would that work? Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right, we are moving into action items. Um, starting on page 47, item A, resolution 2024 2, consideration of Sycamore Grove Apartments lease agreement. Uh, consideration to terminate the lease with Sycamore Grove Apartments and stable February, February board meeting. Uh, is recommended the board of trustees agree to terminate the current lease with Sycamore Grove's. Apartments upon completion of the current agreement term. Is there any questions or comments? I just want to make a comment. I have visited with Ron Query, which owns Sigmund Apartments, and he's fine with uh, the agreement to terminate that. He understands uh, what we're going through with him. I, I still think that uh, if we needed housing, I, I think all the figures I could come up with we weren't losing money. But it might be a little clearer to not have that agreement. It was my talk with Ron. What does that happen? When the state, when the state, the end of the year. Yeah. 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 We have 30. Yeah. Tell them about first of April or something. But you said, yeah. Gina said that he has to have some idea by sure. first of April. 60 day or 90 day notice. Yeah. It's written in the contract. Yeah, right. Well, then if we, then if we do that, we're in the, the window of opportunity. Right. I'd entertain a motion. I so move. I second. Awesome. Yes. Paul? Yes. Guinness? Yes. Rob? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Sparkles Fire? Yes. Y'all? Item B, resolution 2024 3, consideration of board member conflict of interest policy. Uh, we discussed this policy at last month's meeting. It is recommended that the FSCC Board of Trustees approve the board member conflict of interest policy as presented. It ends up being a case by case anyway, doesn't it? I'm making a motion to be approved. Second. Thank you. Julie Paul. Holt? Yes. McKinnis? Yes. Rock? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Bartles Meyer? Yes. Evans? Yes. Thank you. Item C, resolution 2024 4, consideration of board meeting rules order policy. Again, we reviewed this last month. And it's recommended the Board of Trustees approve the board meeting rules of board policy as presented. Is there any reason that B is in the same paragraph as in the one in the red? I mean, is that it's saying that was a grammatical thing? <laughs> or it was an edit to the original. Okay, no, yeah, that's, 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 that's a grammatical. Oh, that's a grammatical. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it's I don't I don't understand it. Okay. So no, that has no bearing on. That's why I asked. More questions or comments? Motion. John. So good. Holt. Yes. McKinnis. Yes. Rock. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Bartles Meyer. Yes. 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 Item D, Resolution 2024-5, Consideration of Employee Tuition Scholarship Policy. Uh, this was covered in last month's meeting as well. It's recommended that the FSCC Board of Trustees approve the Employee Tuition Scholarship Policy as presented. I think I want to make sure that, that you guys are clear in that second line, first sentence, the second line, 
is being covered at the cost of in district tuition. And so there is a difference, there's a differential. So if, if this is an employee that works or that's taking courses at Miami County, there's a there's a, there's a cost differential between between that. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that that is the case and that we're not that we're being cognizant of our responsibility to our, our taxing entities. Well, then it makes it more fair. It's equal. I know that they pay more, but it makes it possible. Right. Here to make a motion. I move. Thank you, John. I'll try Whenever you're ready. Yes. Rock? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Carlos Meyer? Yes. Feeling? Yes. 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 Resolution 2024-6. Yes. Consideration of campus closings to another policy. Uh, we went over the campus closing due to weather policy last month and it's recommended we approve it this month. As the there are no questions here. Mom was unmoved. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Rock. Bailey. Yes. Arnold Meyer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Item F. Consideration of tuition and fees for 2024-25 academic year. Um, this is on page 52, but uh, Julie handed out the updated list of Changes to the CDs and to the You want to give us any context to the sure. So um, we left uh, this year. We are not making any recommendations for tuition increase. Uh, we are placing all increase on tuition on the key side. Uh, you'll see that the increase went from $61 to $66 uh, with the breakdown uh, just there below. Um, as we as we noted, um, we are needing to um, our student activity be includes student activities, um, activities for students, uh, student life. It also includes our um, Contributions for uh, for scholarships as part of that. And so um, that number is is um, under something, so to speak. Um, and and we added in the student activity issue into that one as well. We encompassed that up onto that first line, um, and then just did some cleanup for for the uh, for the remainder of those items. The special building project fee, um, the six dollars we were collecting uh, was not enough to cover the payment, and so we increased that. And um, I think six, the, the amount there was enough at one time, but with our decline of our enrollment numbers, um, you're generating less, and so we increased the fee to, to recoup, and, and, and that was on the backs of the general fund. Uh, the difference. So we, we decided to change that. Um, the other um, significant change on that first page is um, we decided that all residents over at, excuse me, all residents that are off campus locations that includes both um, Garrison and the Lodge uh, will now be on a seven meal plan. Um, To, um, to pay for several reasons. One, to keep our enrollment, or not our enrollment, but our meal count higher. Um, plus, we really think that it's important that those students get at least, have the option to have at least one meal a day if they choose to, to take advantage of it. Uh, but we do know that a lot of our student athletes who live in those areas, um, they do get meals on the road uh, from the dining hall. and. It becomes a nightmare trying to figure out who's not a nightmare, but it, it's a clerical 
situation where they have to decide who is um, who's on wheel plan, who's not on wheel plan, how do those get charged? Do they even charge them? Excuse me, does the coach even pay for it? Um, so uh, just across the board, um, Great Western said, hey, well, uh, if, if you put all of them on there, then we'll just, we won't have to worry about that. So we've made that decision. So that's seven meals per week? Yeah, seven meals per week. Um, based on increase in food costs, we will be increasing the, the base meal plan um, uh, by $200 per semester. Um, our, our food costs came in pretty high um, over the last year. Uh, and so in order to, to make that, we switched. Um, nothing else drastic on page one. Um, I have a question on page two. Sure. We have VAC tool set versus optional discontinued. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something that the student was, was paying for? Uh, John, they were before we were requiring students to buy their tools. Now we have them at our site so the student can use those tools. They're not required. I mean, sometimes they are very expensive, and it's high school students, and that they can't afford to buy it. And it was basically being added to their fees, if it makes any sense. Yeah. So we have tools they can use it, but if the student wants to go and buy their own tools, they can do that. That same thing with the Harlow program? Yes, we are not uh, charging the student for those tools if it makes sense. They yes. can do it. If they want to buy their own personal. Absolutely, uh, yes. But they, they can use ours that are setting up those facilities. Okay. Yes. Okay. That also mean that the same thing for intro to heavy equipment? Uh, we really don't have uh, any tools for intro to heavy equipment. They've been using simulators and intro to heavy equipment because um, I'm taking the new certificate to cable, which I'll probably do it in my update. We are taking away intro to heavy equipment and then we have the basic heavy equipment because we have full credit hours, we can take the last credit hours. So that's why we Okay. Because that's not really part of the certificate. Okay. Are the public, public programs are not in there for current year? That just not in there? Let's just say, yeah. Uh, Cyber page, cosmopolitan, uh, and manicuring program. <laughs> It should be the same as what it was last week. So they have changed. Change. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thing. We are after this spring semester that's terminated at Proper County. A lot of times there was a question uh, about the student wellness fee on the first page. A lot of students and parents have a problem with that since we did not have any wellness like, center on campus. Like a nurse or, like a nurse or anything, yeah. Medic or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, and I, I think we have to, there may be the possibility in the future that if we somehow are able to staff um, the Hill Street facility, that we may open that up to students. And so you may see that come back. As a wellness activity. Yes, okay. Uh, as Physical a wellness yes. area. Yes. Opportunity. Since you brought it up, what is two, how can the $2 fee be? What is that for a couple of band aids? I mean, it, I mean, serious, $2 for a student wellness fee. It is amazing how many students and parents have bought that. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> that, 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 it was amazing. Okay. I asked one clerk. Clarifying question mm -hmm. on this one that you handed out. Um, those fees 
are rounded. Yeah, let's see how this one says. Remember this morning when we were formatting it, we didn't know the decimal points, but this one says. Oh, move 20 cents. 20 cents. So, like, on the on the oh, one that was in the packet, it's 3050 for the student activity fee, and then the special building project fee was seven dollars and fifty cents, and it bumped them both up. Okay, it's it's it will be 66, right? Uh, is the total? I don't, yeah, and I don't know if that matters. Val breaks down, yeah, that was a formatting. Um, yeah. so we'll we'll verify that. And I will, I will say that, um. Most of what you see here will stay. There may be a few, because we're waiting on some information back from instructors. There may be at a future meeting where we say, hey, here's, uh, here's some that we've got information back from faculty that says they need more. Uh, they would like to increase their fees. Also, we are, um, the state is really taking a look at what we're charging for. For our course fees and program fees. And so there may be some changes based on what is being required from the state. And so um, we've done, uh, I think, three submissions to them. And each time they come back with another question. Uh, and then they make us all, all the community colleagues go back in and look at our fees and look at what we're charging based on a particular program. So for example, the, the median cost for someone to provide new nursing may be different at, at several institutions. And so the state is trying to say, well, why is it different? And so we're having to answer questions, but if there's something that comes back that forces us to change something, we're kind of at the mercy of the state on that. And so we're trying to, we, we've told the state Courses are opening. We need to have this information so that we can make sure students are aware of what they're going to be asked to pay before they start doing a bunch of enrollment. And so we're waiting to get back. Does the state feel like you're charging too much, or or do you get on? In some cases, yes. In some cases, they they want to know just what the what what the cost is and or why those why why is it different from a different school a different okay. Why is it different on the east side of the state versus on the west side? So it's statewide, it's not just us. No, right? no, this is all community colleges. All community colleges are struggling uh, with what they're asking for us in terms of the city. Back to the, the very front here, you're taking the increases on fees from 61 to 76 instead of doing a, a, a for credit hour that you may be saying. How's that compare? to Southeast Kansas, per se, for the other colleges in our region. Most everyone that I'm aware of is going up anywhere from two to six. Um, so they're probably landing at about four, uh, a $4 increase across the board for tuition. So how's our, basically our credit, our tuition credit, our, we're 47. We'll say how's the county, Ocean county. That count. Uh, how's that? If, if you rank us one being the most expensive to 18, 19 being the least expensive, we were smacked out at 11. I believe. Yeah, on our tuition to get easy. So even if you have this five dollar increase, it may boost us up to eight or nine. Well, well that goes to the increases too. But. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying so. It's because we're going up a dollar, probably a dollar more than anybody else in Southeast Kansas. It, it may bump us to the to crack the top ten. Okay. They may like to make a motion to approve the payments for this year's tuition. I make motion to approve. I'll say. Bailey? Ron? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Charles Meyer? Yes. 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 Okay. 
Item G, Resolution 2024-8, Consideration of Agreement Between FSCC and IDEA. Uh, the background, FSCC and IDEA first entered into an agreement on March 20th, 2023. FSCC President and College Council wants to meet with IDEA for the purpose of amending the original agreement. It is recommended for the trustees to approve the FSCC president and college council to meet with ideas for the purpose of amending the agreement for March 20, 2023. And what does that mean? Dr. Kegler and uh, Zach Zappel yes. are going to meet with them to um, review the contract. And I don't remember exactly what it makes some amendments for them. Yeah, we're going to make some amendments to the uh, more of that, I think, applicable to Gina so she can understand it and feel more comfortable with it. Uh, his ability from financial. There's, again, I, don't, I, I want it to be clear that I think the program itself, uh, the grants on the good, and I think that our execution of this agreement um, needs to be a little bit more defined. And so I think that's this is an opportunity uh, for us to go back to um, the idea of board more or less and say, okay, uh, the idea of leadership and say, well, how do, how do you guys feel about this and kind of reestablish uh, a base or a norm for how we're going to do business moving forward. So have we gotten any, you know, have we, got, have we figured out where money can pay to, you know, there was some question of some of the fees. We, we still have not received access to how do we move to get forward on that? I mean, we need to get a judge subpoena to get you know what I mean? Because yeah. this date is coming up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we need to, we need to have that information for Gina mm -hmm. so she can. So how, how we, how we go about doing it? I think we, I think as part of the conversation um, with, uh, with Zach and myself and their leadership, uh, we'll sit down with them and say, here's, here are the things that we need to have for the agreement as it stands now. And then, we need that, and and I have a feeling, in, in, in that we will probably give them some sort of deadline of hey, we'd like this information by then, um, and to give them time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not. I don't think there's. I don't think it's Zach's intention. I, I can't speak for Zach, but uh, I don't think it's my intention to for to for this to go out until the end of. That, that window of June 3rd or whatever uh, for the agreement. I don't, I don't think there's any desire to store that long for 30 days, I think. To, to do what? To gain access to the other, to the information that the financial yeah. agreement, yeah, there's a lot of that missing. It's not kind of missing. And the agreement spelled that out, too. Uh, yeah. Let's get quarterly you know, financial from it. You can't got those. And actually, the way Zach presented to us is that it was made that us as a board to control that idea. First, they, they should be answering to us. It doesn't seem like that's now it's not. Yeah, that's not happening. Not that, and I don't think you went against it, but I think you just want to clean it out a little bit. So we're in control back. What we think is that we're, we're still a little bit in that. Right. How much it's, it's, it's our belief in the yard now. I don't, I, I would have to ask you. They have made payments now. So on the 22nd, we received $469,000. And then there were payments made, which was a partial of what was owed. And then we received some payments for the game right now. But it was just that. How much is that? Um, one so we're, we're, we're yeah. still out of how we're getting There's about two hundred thousand dollars that comes from the specific agreements. The Iowa United is another hundred. 
but and you still haven't received uh like your consultants, you know, it was on there. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you have no idea who that is. We've not received any um access. Yeah. I'd have to see that from the receipts. Yes. You might see them. Well, we're going to lie. I'd have to see that for any decisions are made. Oh, you know? yeah. Absolutely. I think we need all that information. Since when Zach that, explained it. Do you have information that you can share with us? All I have is this sheet. Yeah, I gave you I didn't have it. Uh, and you you got this from where? Um, who gave you this? Janet Venture. She was the person who was she was executive or her CEO or executive yeah. team. And uh, John Farrell was the main Fed guy. He's he was really the guy talking about. Scott, stinking nuts are going to go all on. What you think that? Speaking to yeah. not just I mean, idea. the idea. Mm -hmm. You're talking about I didn't remember. My wife is on, and I can't remember who the other people are on that. I don't have that list in front of me. But that but John Farrell is one. This goes back 20 some years, yeah, the four years. John Farrell is the one that theoretically makes decisions. He's the guru of the grants, right? The grants. He and Dick Edges and Harold Sims were the three people that started all this book back in well, 20 years ago. Like the AGP in the camp and they started the GBP, IDRC, Iowa Project, S, I S O S Y. So, so, so. So did John Farrell did he awards did it to the resident award he decide who handled these programs? So I, I understand. Decides who handled them up to how to use them. He met Dick Hedges with Carolyn uh, at the Green Ocean. And this started through John Farrell, right? Green books, right? They needed a third party. They needed a third party to handle these fees, okay. these funds. Okay. And uh, when they started, we would receive, the, let's just say this $100,000. They're going to fund a migrant education program. We would oversee those funds and pay those bills. And the people who oversaw these funds would be paid by the state or the feds. And then we would get, we're talking about here, eight percent of that right. for us to use at the administration. So is he the he's not the grant writer? No. Okay. No, these aren't. This is not grants. These are the grants. These are photo group programs. Right. That were set up to help fund, and, and my understanding is migrant educated students or children of migrant migrant workers. So at what point did uh, it it because be, there's how many employees with this idea? Forty five, right? Yeah, there's forty five out of the two hundred employees. We have forty five for the project. Okay. And originally those were funded, or those were paid by the feds or the state. Yeah. And now they're not. They, I, okay. Uh, I can't really quote on that, but those now, as I understand it, those people being paid out of the 8% of the college would get. No, uh, no. So, the 45 employees that are being paid, that SEC employees, are then reimbursed back from, from right here. Yeah. Um, the 
administrative allowance, the part that's supposed to come out of the 8% for the agreement, is the executive director's salary as well as the administrative So that's what the agreement spells out. So that is deducted from the 8%, along with things like supplies and accounting costs and et cetera, et cetera. What about consultant? Um, the consultant is part of that budget, um, but I don't know who the is. Who's the executive assistant? Um, um, yeah, she is the middle. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I think it is Ashley. I think you're right. It's Alex. Yeah, I thought you Correct. I mean, I just didn't need to be careful because you're getting in the public meeting to talk about what you know. I think this is a good idea, uh, an opportunity to just focus back on what we're trying to decide tonight. Um, and, you know, I, I, Zach is a great, op I mean, he's a great yeah. asset to have in this conversation. Yeah. I, I think what we got on here is uh, him, Dr. Taylor, that real is very going to be with the order, the leadership of the idea. Right. And, and, uh, the, mm -hmm. yeah, and then report back to us. Right. Are you, is that your motion? The, uh, the directors and questions that you be asked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. sure. But if there's no more, I make the recommendation that the board trustees recommend. Uh, Recommendation listed here. I'll make that motion. Yeah. I'll second. Thank you, Doug. And, and with the understanding that before we, we mean Zach and myself, go to them, you all would like, you know, that you would like to see kind yeah. of what our proposal is before the agenda. We just want to make sure we understand and people start doing as as much well. information as possible. Yeah. Okay. Did you amend that motion? No. Yeah. That? No, no. Okay. You no. got it. Yeah. You will be handing it off to the vote. Bailey? Yes. Barbara Snyder? Yes. Ewens? Yes. Holt? Yes. McInnes? Yes. Yes. All right, we're to item H, resolution 2024-9, consideration in culinary arts memorandum of understanding between FSCC and Southeast Kansas Education Service Center, also known as Greenbush, updating the ongoing culinary arts services. It's recommended the FSCC Board of Trustees approve this memorandum of understanding between FSCC and Southeast Kansas Education Service Center as and this is apparently this is something that we always do. Um, they're just asking for the board signature on it. Um, and so that's been going on for two or three years, I think. Something at least. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Jed. Arnold Snyder. Yes. Evans. Yes. Bolt. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Bailey. Yes. All right, we're on to page 60. This is IMI Resolution 2024-10, Consideration of Amended Lease Agreement between FSCC and the City of Frontenac. Following is an amendment to the lease between FSCC and the City of Frontenac. Our Harley-Davidson program is housed in a building lease from the City of Frontenac. None of the leases have identified a specific property description. The amended lease includes a legal description of the property being leased, and it's also in there on the survey. Uh, it's recommended the FSCC Board of Trustees approve the amended lease agreement between FSCC and the City of Trump. Questions or comments? I believe it's very cool, and I, there are no questions or comments. I move. Thank you, John. So, thank you, Jim. Uh, Ewens? Yes. Holt? Yes. McNeilis? Yes. Roth? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Arnold Meyer? Yes. And we're going to the added item J, April 4. Um, while working on uh, 
the board agenda, um, it was discovered that myself and Sonia and Sarah Sutton will be attending the Higher Learning Commission uh, annual conference in uh, it's on April, between April 12th and April 16th. And so we are requesting, excuse me, requesting that we reschedule the uh, the April board meeting to the 22nd. Yeah. So we're looking at Monday, April 22nd, instead of same time and location to be to be mm -hmm. so April 22nd, 5 30. Yes. 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 Um, we don't have a report, okay? And I don't, unless Northern Parks put one in the community. There is one on page 76. There is one. Northern Parks put these there. And uh, the only update from the foundation uh, would be that the foundation needs this one thing. Foundation needs this one. And the administration. Um, Sonia or Tom? Why do you know Yeah. Thanks a lot. She was making techniques. Okay. Okay. From my office, we've been working on overlay overload contracts. That was the first um, set of overload contracts we just did. Um, and then we have the second and third after the late start classes um, have started. Uh, the other things we'll, I've been working on is the degree maps because we have to have the degree maps for all of our associate degrees aligned. Um, it needs to be submitted to the board on July 1st. So I'm working on that at the registrar's office. And hopefully, we'll present that to this board in the April meeting so you guys can look at it in terms of what it looks like. Uh, course schedule for fall. We just opened it today, so it is on our website if you guys want to look at the fall schedule. It's just a so soft opening. You can view the schedule, students can view the schedule, but they are not able to enroll till they talk to their advisor, which is going to be they can create their schedule, but they'll be able to enroll on um, April 1st. That is when it's open for enrollment for our graduate students. For our new students who have not taken classes with us, uh, they will be able to enroll April 10th because we are just giving our attorney students first chance to take the classes what they want to. Um, the other thing uh, from what I put in uh, the board packet is the John Deere Certificate and Associate of Applied Science degree, which I presented to you, it has been approved by KBORT, so we are ready to go with that in fall, yes. Um, I also presented to you heavy equipment operator uh, certificate program, and I had sent that information to KBORT last month because they do it monthly, so they had some questions, they needed some uh, additional information, and since the deadline had passed, I said I will submit it um, this month, and the deadline was this last Thursday, and I was able to submit all that information before that. I got a confirmation that they have all they have all the required documentation. Um, they are gonna announce that or KBOR is gonna send out an email to all the colleges saying that we are gonna be starting this program this Thursday. It's gonna sit on their website for 10 days for comment period, and then we'll have a TA meeting next month to get that approved. So yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, I did with cable is quantitative reasoning because we are um, getting rid of all our developmental courses. So intermediate algebra is what course we still offer, and we have to phase that out. And instead of that, we're going to be offering quantitative reasoning. So I also submitted the paperwork for that to cable because it's a system-wide transfer course. If a student takes that course 
from us and goes to any other institution in the state of Kansas, it's a transferable amount of credit. So it needs to be on their website to show that Fort Scott offers those courses of um, transferable course. So it's already there. So that's a good thing. Um, the other couple of things we've been working on is uh, we had a meeting, actually, Sarah, I, and Ben. We had a meeting with our Perkins coordinator from the state because we had so much turnover in our college. They want to do an audit, a Perkins audit, because all our CPE programs are under Perkins and we get money from them to spend on our equipment. So she came, but it's it's going to be a normal, regular audit. So she told us, and the audit is April 10th. But before that, we have to fill out all the paperwork for all our programs, which are part of CDE, and submit it to um, Perkins by 26. So March 26 is the deadline. So we've been working on that to fill out all the paperwork and all tag of all the items, which we have brought to Perkins funding. The other thing is, um, the nursing program, uh, having weekly meetings with the nursing task force because we have to go in front of KSBM, which is Kansas State Board of Nursing. Um, this month, which is next Tuesday, we have to go and uh, give a presentation on our, or update on our nursing program. So we are just preparing in terms of what we're going to be talking about, how we're going to send like, a copy of that presentation to Dr. Pedro. So that's next Tuesday. I think that's all I have. If you have any questions, advisors in terms of uh, for students, uh, we have two common advisors that they can advise any program, but then we have separate advisors in terms of like Sarah does her ag um, nursing, do their own because they want to make sure that their students are taking the classes. Yeah, trio advisors. We have trio advisors for all the other So. Students who are part of the program, they will do that. Those advisors. Yeah. I'm just curious. Uh, what's the feeling amongst the nursing faculty? Is everybody feeling pretty good about that? I think uh, we are. I am just off the record. <laughs> we we are going because we are excited. I mean, our our passing rates have improved. We got the hundred percent pass. Uh, passing rate for last four and for last year we had 78.95. I know it's not 80 percent, and that's what they're requiring. Right. Uh, but I think everybody is very pumped. We our students are happy. We when do we when we do have our monthly meetings? I mean we are meeting weekly, but then we have our monthly meetings with faculty and student representatives, and we are talking to them, them to see that what kind of impact they are seeing. But those two things work. Oh, so far, they are not me. <laughs> I'll, I'll add that um, Darkness and Vicky later have just hit the ground running, um, and they need to be commended for the Absolutely. work that they're doing to, I mean, yes, to, to, to move, that, move that forward. There, um, they've got lots of ideas, lots of good ideas. Oh, no. uh, and, and there's a, really, there's a renewed energy, especially in Darkness. And, and I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm being legit. I mean, she was. She was. You know, I was concerned about her wanting to even stay a part of it. And you know, now she's she's running circles around everybody else with her energy. So that's been uh, really, really good to see. Yeah, do we still offer CNA and CMA? Are we we're certified to do that? So. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Uh, that is part of the Allied Health Program. So and uh, like I was saying, I know uh, Brian asked that question. When we go to the board, we are hoping to ask them that if we could start a new cohort and call that as yeah. our intention because we told them that we were seizing admission. Yeah. So that's that's for the new nursing program. Board. That's what we are uh, We are going to ask that yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll see what they say. But yeah, that's. Well, I appreciate that uh, information because I mean, I get asked for people. You know how it's going because it seemed like the you know news was pretty bad in the fall and it, i'm so excited i'm too to yeah, this. Okay. I mean, Brian, like we have done so much work but then i say it does the results speak for themselves you know yeah. that our passing rate shows that the the strategies we have used and what we have implemented is working so well it it, it 
it makes me feel good that your your folks feel good and are excited about what's coming down the pike. That's awesome. Thank you for your hard work. Yeah, it's all that hard work. I'm just very uh, supportive. <laughs> that's fine. You're supporting well. <laughs> I have one of the limitations of what you can offer in health. I mean, for instance. Ultrasound is a huge thing right now. Oh, not really a limitation. Um, the thing is, again, when we have these state agencies mandating what we can and cannot do, we need to make sure we have total right side of That is the biggest challenge we've had in our programs, especially allied health or nursing, keeping those because then they go out in the field, they may double or triple yeah. like what we can offer. So that is the thing, but. I think once we build this program or make it stronger or where we want it to be, I think we can start with more more programs like that because hey, if other colleges can do it, I think we should take it. It's expensive too. It, absolutely. That's what it is. But I think if we could make, I mean, have some kind of collaboration or something, it's possible. Yeah, so, yeah. That's great. I'm not so, uh, a few over here. Broad things, and then we'll look at the case of the Kennedy report in front of you. Um, for financial advice, uh, we did do two big batches of refunds um, at the end of February. And so, those all uh, were distributed out. It's definitely a learning lesson for me <laughs> as I haven't gone through that process before. Um, but we also sh shifted it into more training. So, in the past, you know, your cashier. Back in the day, but he had all your paper patches, and that had somewhat gotten shifted over to the director of business to do those electronic papers. And so we're shifting that back because that's how it should be anyway. Um, in addition to that, technically, I can't read them because I'm pulling down the money from the Fed. Yeah, so there needs to be that separation. So, in light of that, um, those refund matches were about $617,000. And again, we're even looking at a community college and that economic impacts into your community. Those are dollars that I'm sure it's worked out. She got used a lot. I'm sure like Walmart saw some, you know, some spending going on in our community. But all of those funds, um, you see a lot of that go back into your community. Um, we did go ahead and spent really had hoped to spend more spring break on your treasurer's report. It spent a lot of time um, tying out your pedal and your lobby caps. Uh, those are things that will be in your audit as items of findings. And so part of that process um, that we will go through with the audit is finding corrective measures. And so if we can go ahead and visit with them about what we're doing now to make sure that those things don't happen going forward, then those are pluses as we look at wrapping up our financial audit. So, um, as far as technology, um, our team of three continues to really get get ahead. Um, you know, people have been which is institutional research, but that's a different factor than your tech, which happens every day as far as running those systems and that type of thing. The big thing with technology that we're going to have to invest in, aside from just um, units or devices, which we don't have a rotation for that setup, so that's something we're going to have to address at some point because I think the time is paid for a lot of that. But it's training. So we've got a lot of this GLK training that's coming down the pipe. Um, we've got um, GLK. It's a very yeah. And I, we're just, it's going to become far and more friendly. <laughs> <laughs> because we're longing for acting at the um, but that training can run anywhere between thirty to sixty thousand dollars. So it is a huge expense, um, and but it's also important to be in compliance. It was something that the auditors asked about during this discussion. So um, as far as business office, we just continue to work through processes. 
Um, unfortunately, there's been a lot of time tied up in your audit, um, and you may not have noticed that on your purchase orders that you approved tonight, there was an additional $20,000. So your audit was written with it at $28,500, um, and we've received a bill for $20,000 more, and we expect one more. So um, I'm hopeful that that last bill will be in that $8,500 range, but there is no doubt that um, this audit did cost you so, so much. They go past. Oh, yes. I mean, it's fine. There's a lot. Yeah, I okay, mean, so they're going to have to you what in March. Yeah, and they will. We anticipate it has to be wrapped up okay. and by the end of March. Um, so what the process we're in now is the financials are under review by the senior auditor, um, and the will report on management discussion analysis as well as corrected. So what do we do to make sure that we don't have findings going forward? Is what that component is and. It's been four more, but I guess that's time to that evidence. So, um, aside from that, the business department uh, has started segments of that day one training, and so we'll be tied up in the next two weeks as far as going through what does that look like on day one for us. Um, the cat, I'm really optimistic. The cash component that I saw that was not happening, so it doesn't go bigger. And that is something that I feel like. Name really, um, so it, I'm sorry, it doesn't do it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so you, you need to do the transfer yourself for that. So, yeah, I can handle that. Um, I think that's crazy for that expensive product. But, um, that said, if you look at your judgments report, um, my intent had been to go into so your 37 migrant funds, since we've already talked about those a lot. So you'll notice that there's a big positive and then there's a bunch of things. And I didn't go in and adjust that because I wanted to be completely free. Um, ultimately, the way that boys or this system works is if even though I can go, I can split expense by department and drill down on that. Um, when you receive a deposit, it's a manual entry to move that password. And so, and that's okay, I'm capable of doing that. But I also didn't want to present you information that wasn't right. So that's where um, it shows you the detail of that. Um, you'll also notice, again, the same thing where you have an ending cash balance and you don't see any videos. Um, and it's important for you to be looking at both components, not only what your cash is, but what you've already committed to yourself and where it was And so then your back side, which is the shorter side, is where it shows to you what we're looking at projections wise through June 30. Um, I will tell you that before last month's meeting was the first meeting that I felt like I could say, okay, we're going to be okay going through June. We're not going to be at the cash flow or the cash balances that I would recommend to you or that we would want to see in your accounts at that point that are we capable of making it. So um, there's been a number of factors into that. I think we Number one, we, we talked about it this morning, but those payment plans make a huge difference. Making sure that getting back to that basics of where, you know, the expectation is we're going to help you as a student make arrangements for your obligation, but at the end of the day, um, we need to be making sure that we're collecting the receivables. When your audit shows that you have a half a million in receivables at the end of the year, that's not good. And we just truly got away from that basics. It's no different than the first got away from those basics. And so when you can get back to those things, then it functions the way it should. And, and it should be doing, doing that. It impacted 11 students decided to, to drop and not return. Uh, and I would, I would guess that a large majority of the four students is, had signed up for a class and then should have been dropped. Do you think you might ask about that? Uh, Accounts large accounts that I mean, can we just write that off? Uh, there are a number of things. So, um, we have written off some of those accounts. So, when I went back and um, on the receivables for scholarships, for example, you know, initially when I was looking at that, I thought, okay, well, it looks like it's a donation, maybe we didn't get a bill. Then it turned out it was. No, we allow people to bring in how many summer camps in the summer, and then the coaches were responsible for raising this money. Well, then of course we've got a transition. Because what happened? You know, that's just part. You know what I mean? 
I don't understand going through careers all the time. That was the practice, and it had worked for a number of years. Um, but those types of things, yes, we do. I mean, there's things that we're just seeing in the audit overall. Um, it's like, you know, folks who are the morning was reported at retail value. Well, it should be reported at cost. You know, those types of things. But that's where a balance sheet is really, really important. Because if your balance sheet's not right, your other side of that's not right, which is your profit loss or anything like that. Okay. Um, so we will work down through the other component that we haven't talked about is that the county did, through the process of their reconciliation process, um, had another $70,000 that was turned over to us this year. Um, it was some TIP funds that had not been allocated correctly or something. And so that money is in here. And so we are thankful for that $70,000. Um, we're also thankful for a very mild campus winter because utilities is something that, I mean, we'll go all day, but really can impact you when you have the huge number of square footage that you have. So um, I'm thankful for that. Um, and then the other stuff is just um, looking things. So are there variables that can still swing it? Back and forth, there are um, things like property tax collections that can always be too. to. Um, we'll have a distribution March 20th, while well, another one in June, March 20th, one we don't anticipate to be very large. Um, and then it's going to be that collection of revenues. So I read a report this morning to see where we were still at, and I didn't take it that of you know, like that, but we had about 600000 out there. But we know that we have payment plans coming in through March and April. Um, and so then I did eighty five percent collection ratio, and that was five hundred twenty thousand. So I'm going to collect. So lots of information. Your audit will be done probably before your next board meeting. Well, we'll have to get your certificates. We have to send. Um, but uh, just know that they've done their they've done their aspect of asking the questions and that type of thing. They've looked at that part of everything, and that's what we want to do. I might just ask, you know, your your projection here shows us that $32,528 at the end of June. If you had your kind of wish, yeah. but where would you rather see that? Um, I have always done three months of operating capital. Okay. And that's because if you have to pay the city, if you have a huge water break, I mean, your insurance deductible is $100,000. We also have a number of bills that come pay Life. So, I mean, I think back in the day, the number here was about 1.5 million. That's not enough. I think the number I told you is too late. <laughs> it's because um, there's also some things that you have to have those. You have a loan arrangement on this building, particular, and you're supposed to have a certain amount of cash in that account to show that you can make those dollars. <laughs> uh, now, the advantage of that is in a time frame like today, when you have those savings that you've set aside and can hear more large products or take advantage of opportunities, you can also make a little bit interest on yep. so, uh, And hopefully, then going forward next year, we can also do the same thing. Or we know in January, we're going to receive some significant funding at that point. We need to do something to make that money grow for you, even if it's too <laughs> That's it's just for money to work. It wasn't a study. <laughs> That's the ultimate win. I mean, if, if we had not stopped spending, then we would not be where you And that didn't happen. Like, it didn't just happen because we said stop spending, but without the support of the campus students. Right. Yeah. Yep. It doesn't happen. So, the idea Yes, sir. Are they on? <laughs> The biggest pain ever. So, is that how they do that? They, I send them invoices. So on payroll first. Yeah. So I have gone through and for like right. put those invoices out there, and those are supposed to be a straight reimbursement. Yeah. Now, the check I got for for December, there were some credits on there that I didn't agree with, but I'll work through with that because, like, I it, to me, the biggest problem is. How the grants were handled in the previous is my understanding. It's got really messy because everything went in one file. 
and instead of separating the study of the plant for each grant, which would have been pleased, um, we chose not to, so we chose to blend it. So I I don't blend that as an accountant, I just don't. And so to me, when there is an invoice for a bill, then pay that invoice. Because those funds should pay that invoice. If you want to work it out on your end, however, that's fine. But there needs to be that we need to go away from one of the funds. So, so that money that we have received, that we were bringing in that. Um, it was to reimburse us for payroll. So we were out cash money. If we give an administrative allowance, so when we talk about that 8%, so why we're getting that money, is it at your discretion? Yes, but it is intended to offset the cost of administrating that. Right. So, it most definitely costs you more in writing payroll checks and paying bills because you have check stock and have a lot of multitude of things. You also have your subscription software to your accounting system, which, as horrible as it is, is still $120,000 a year. You know what I mean? There's, there's, it obviously takes more personnel to handle all of those groups. So I will tell you, you know, feasibly, you need one person that handles your accounting for your grades. If you want to do it right and do it well, that's what you need. And that's not been how it's been for years. That's how we got the problem in the first place. I mean, it's really, I mean, but it was a considerable amount of time to do it well. And secondly, you were required to do it well because a lot of those are federal grants, which means that there's a level of compliance that you have to do not only just because of the vendor, because you're required to as part of the vendor. So when you're handling federal funds or state funds, regardless of what those are, there is a different level of screening. Thank you, Gina. All right, last but not least, I, I did include a full report from all my departments in the board agenda. I started on page 59. Uh, I won't go through everything. I'll just take some time notes of some things that we have coming up. Uh, we have our housing applications opening on Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Uh, that's for all of our housing locations. Uh, it's very specific with 8 o'clock because we're first come, first serve with our housing. And so everybody wants the apartments and they'll all apply for it at eight o'clock uh, at zero point zero. Um, and so it's uh, important for us to be able to get those out uh, and get them accurately uh, at the right time and uh, then sort out the chaos afterwards. Uh, Somebody mentioned that enrollment uh, opens for everybody or uh, new students on April 10th. Uh, April 10th, we will have an enrollment day. Uh, on campus, it's the first time we've done this. Uh, it's an RSV button, there's a notification that will go out uh, to all area schools and all students that uh, have applied for admission to school. Uh, and they will make appointments and come in and advise their clients to uh, instructors, admissions, uh, from the business office, pretty much everyone they, uh, they need to be able to get their full college experience. Uh, that'll be running from about nine to noon on that day, and we'll have three of those as the semester uh, ends and into the summer to make sure that we can get all of the services that we have. Uh, we get student services available to all of the students who are uh, new to the school and they're applying for the first time, and uh, make sure that they have all their stuff in here so we can get them all for the Let's see, we uh, had about 60 kids on the campus today uh, from Oklahoma High School. Uh, Tom Gennett is our admissions representative. Uh, she was happy to give all of them to her today. She had some great stories when she came back in the office. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to meet Tom yet, she's been one of the bright spots of our hiring this last year. Uh, she showed up and instantly put on Greyhounds apparel faster and more authoritative than human. I've seen her great the community in the area. It's a great ambassador for SCC and our students. 
I uh, and she's been excellent. Uh, her son went here. She's got a great story uh, about her son and how FSCC was important to him in his development. And uh, I can say that when she said that in her interview, I was like, she's got the story that if she says that to parents, she they're gonna come. Uh, and she's been great uh, outside of the story, but she's got a great one. So if you get a chance, to talk to her about it. Uh, but I'd be happy to answer questions for anyone who has anything on my. I just want to ask about a four day week. How how is our students responded to that? Well, we don't know because it's just normal. I but PR hasn't been, been out on it or anything. Not really. I uh, because the the decision was kind of uh, made with the calendar committee and we just finalized it, and so we are kind of behind the times a little bit as far as getting the advertising on that out. I mm -hmm. uh, really I think we'll see the. I, if it's going to give us a boost in moment, I would project it to be next year because really the October period is when we are at those college fairs recruiting new students. Uh, and so now we're still getting student visits in and everything, but if we uh, wanted to see that really have an impact on our knowledge or how it's going to accurately present itself, I think we would probably would have to do it a little earlier. Uh, but I do think that the students who are currently here, uh, we're hearing good things from them to say that they're excited about it. Uh, as far as new students go, I'm not sure how it's going to affect Well, that may make them a little bit wrong. Yeah. It may make them Like you said, it may improve the start some much more generally. Yeah. yeah. But if there are people still out there. No, we're, we're out there too. So admissions are still uh, going around to their schools and uh, they're at the local schools, uh, this last season eight, I think it was. I uh, went to teacher conferences, and we had Vicky Wigger and Marcus Antonio there uh, to recharge what we have. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the presentation pulled up. Mm -hmm. I promised Brian that this will be the shortest uh, report. And so I would, I'm not going to say time on it, but you will see that this is very straight to the point. So here we go. Uh, uh, the president's report. All right, so here we go. Um, this is where uh, we currently stay in. Um, with our Lake Star, with our Lake Star classes, we added about uh, a little over one percent, uh, and so six point seven seven is where uh, we anticipate we'll be. We'll be in that range. Um, last month we were at, if you remember correctly, if you remember we were at about eight, uh, just just um, just shy of eight. So um, we we gained about it. We gained, we gained one point because we were going down. Um, but that was smaller, obviously that's a negative number. So um, still got some work to do, but um, we knew that it was going to be this way. And so now we're just uh, bracing and, and preparing for uh, how we get these turned around and start getting them even smaller. Uh, so, uh, from a state federal standpoint, uh, some of the things that we are um, getting to getting to look at. I, I kind of mentioned earlier uh, that our Excel CTE fee discussion. Uh, this is the third request uh, that, that the state has asked for uh, from us. And again, uh, the presidents got together. All the college presidents got together and drafted a letter um, saying. Hey, we need to we need to move forward on this, and, and that letter was sent um, to the state. So uh, we haven't heard back. Uh, I think the letter was sent uh, either late Friday or early today. Um, the five day cap a statewide lunch is April twelfth in Junction City. That will be the next time that the presidents get, uh, get together. Um, you guys are welcome to attend that luncheon if you decide. Uh, it's where we honor um, our PTK students, or Phi Beta Kappa, uh, Honor Society students. There are four students from this campus uh, who are being honored, um, and I will be there with them. 
Uh, so it would be a good time to have food uh, in Junction City. Um, if you decide that you want to go with me, you are more than welcome to. Uh, but I have to catch a flight out of Kansas City, so you will have to find your own transportation back. Uh, <laughs> I, I will not drive back to Fort Scott to turn around and drive back to Kansas City uh, to fly out to the HLC. Uh, Perfect time. We talked about that. Uh, I was a little nervous about it. Um, we met on the Friday before Spring Break. Yeah. And that uh, Vera Brown uh, met with us and she reassured us. Um, and so I think there's some work that has to be done, but I, I think it's going to be good. Uh, one of the things that I'm excited about uh, with all of this audit and all of these other things is it gives us an opportunity to reset back to zero and then we work from there. So, you know, we can look at it in terms of, oh, they're, you know, this is, this is bad, but I'm choosing to look at it from the standpoint of this, this resets us Resets our base and now now we go forward. So um gives us an opportunity to to put um I won't say things behind us, but again, reset our base. And then the KSB and quarterly meeting. Um I offered to go, but I was it was I was politely told no by Sonia. Uh that I wanted to go. Saying, uh, I was politely told no way. So uh, and I and I even tried it myself. I don't even try there's some characters she gave in the car. Uh, but she did tell me I just want that for the record. Um uh, and, and we'll be good. Uh I'm I'm excited with the, with the changes that the thing I've done and implemented. And so uh, I think it's just a matter of time before uh we are admitting students back to our uh, nursing program. Um, other items of interest, uh, the HLC annual conference uh, in Chicago uh, is April 12th, uh, so I have to be there first thing on Saturday morning because uh, there is a president's only session um, that I will uh, go to, uh, and then um, there are other sessions on Saturday afternoon uh, into Saturday evening when the keynote starts and then Sunday the actual conference starts. Um, if you think back to one of our meetings um, last semester, uh, we had about six of us that were going. Uh, given the circumstances, we reduced that to just three. Uh, so, for myself, Sonia, and Sarah, we will all be uh, we will be traveling to um, to Chicago. I will go Friday. They will come up on Saturday, and then we will all come back on um, um, Tuesday uh, afternoon. So that'll be. An opportunity for us to uh, to uh, attend some good sessions, get some good information, and prepare for our, our accreditation visit in October 2025. Uh, financial update: um, um, Gina shared that information. Um, you know, I, a lot of people are concerned um, about where we are financially. Um, I I think Gina said it, and I hope people didn't miss it that. It's been within the last few weeks, specifically, that we have truly felt like the worst is behind us. And so people have been waiting for us to get there, and, but it hasn't, it hasn't really happened until just these last few weeks. And so I think you're going to start to see, and I'm going to share with the um, executive committee this morning, that really we're, we, it's time to start switching gears and really start starting with their efficiencies. And, and so we can start to look at how efficient are we in the things that we are doing. And I think that's going to be, um, I think it's a breath of fresh air for us because we're not thinking about the negative. Uh, we're really thinking about, okay, how can we be better? And if we can, if we can start to make ourselves better in particular areas, tweak some things and it's small things. Um, the four day schedule, it's, it's how we, um, how we implement scholarships, you know, we've done some of those things, but really looking at like, some other options there for efficiencies, I think uh, you can see uh, we'll start to take off and really do some good things. Uh, so some other news from around the college, uh, the community conversations that we have been hosting will be next uh, next Wednesday, not this Wednesday, uh, but next Wednesday, March 27th, here in this room, 5.30. Um, we will have the results of the identity conversation, um, and we will start to talk about the image of the college and how um, how that how that interacts. I think we'll I think using the information that we received from 
Uh, Sarah's group tonight, I think it's going to play a big part of that as well. So I think uh, the timing was, was good. Let that sit again and then we'll have a conversation about it. Um, we talked about the college rodeo. Uh, yes, I was in attendance at the rodeo. That is me uh, taking uh, pictures. Uh, I was not able to be there Friday night. I heard it was packed stadium only Thursday or Friday night and Saturday night. Um, I was in Salina uh, with the high school basketball teams and then moved back from Salina and stopped there and supported the men for uh, that Region 6 tournament. I'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, another picture of the rodeo. Um, I thought about running out there and seeing if somebody would come and tackle me. Um, but I didn't really want to embarrass myself. That's the college president. Oh, that's just so good. Um, so anyway, um, that uh, it, it was a good opportunity. Um, I, I um, had never been to a college rodeo, I'm excited. Um, I have talked with Coach Cross, and I have said that um, I hope to be able to, to go to. Wyoming, Laramie, Jasper, Cheyenne, out of every state, every city in the Penn State, not everyone, but I'm just thinking, uh, to go to the college, uh, college radio finals, um, at least uh, and be there to support those guys. So I'm excited about maybe being able to do that. Um, one thing I will say, congratulations to our men's basketball team. In addition to the college radio, um, congratulations to our men's basketball team. Um, they were runners up in the Region 6 championship this year. Um, I have told Blake this information. Um, he can blame this loss on me. Um, he was down by four when I walked in, um, and they lost by a lot more than four. And so I said, You can totally blame it on me. I came in at that time, uh, that was as soon as we could get there. And um, so you can play this one and say, I will do that. So <laughs> I got one loss at Fort Scott, uh, I don't know how it works out, but anyway. Um, excited for those guys. Um, he's he's kind of talking about some of the guys that he has um, that he's got bringing in, that he's bringing in, and I'm excited for him inside for his program. Um, uh, baseball is doing well, and uh, softball is doing well. Um, softball was, was great in receiving votes, and then they kind of went on a little bit of a skid. Uh, um, they, they kind of turned the corner, and so hopefully we'll get back to, uh, to doing well and getting, uh, getting back in the, in the national polls. And then, um, if you did not hear uh, last week, uh, in conjunction with the rodeo, um, we had some damage. We didn't, we didn't rope off the black football field, and so there was some. Um, Horse damage hoofs um, in the playing surface, which could have been detrimental to people's ankles and knees. And so I want to thank um, members of the community um, for coming out. Uh, Vanessa Pointer was out here, Craig Campbell was out here, um, a couple other folks came out, and literally I got the call about six o'clock. And we had about an hour left of daylight, an hour of work of daylight left. And they were able to catch. Uh, we took some dirt to drive over, but, uh, fill the holes. Um, Connor, um, the trainer, uh, uh, he was here. Uh, Vanessa's husband was here. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. Um, but we were able to get the surface. Um, we found out on Monday we had a game on Wednesday, and we were able to get this plane surface. Uh, Fixed and prepared so that the young ladies could have their uh, have their home tournament on um, the you know, high school here at the soccer field, or excuse me, not the soccer field, but black football field. Um, and so, it's appreciate the community coming out, helping us, um, and getting that square away. Um, it was it was a good opportunity. And then we had community members come out and support me, which is which is even cooler. Um, so excited for for black football. Um, next month. Uh, Steve Life will do the program review. Uh, we will have some information for you about the budget for 24-25. Uh, we should have the college audit uh, 
uh, keeping our fingers crossed, and then first reading of some home policy revisions. Um, oh, I don't know why this is all over the place, but here we go. Uh, happy days, we saw on Friday. Uh, then we will be closed the following Friday for Good Friday. Um, and then fall enrollment begins on April 1st. Uh, new student enrollment begins April 10th. And then the uh, president of the PTK luncheon and HOC conference. And then board meeting April 22nd. I didn't want to get too presumptuous about my living in this in case you chose to keep it on the 15th. Uh, but April 22nd will be the next board meeting. Are there any questions? Back on the purpose. Yeah. We share that rate with several other colleges. Are they being audited also? Um, they are not being audited. And the reason being is because if I'm, and Sonia can correct me on this, but I believe that we are basically the facilitator of the grants for those institutions. Is yeah, I mean, what we have is we are in a consortium with other colleges like PSU and then we have Allen and Indy and us. So basically, we do a CLN just together, which is in place for all the years, and then we have the same targets and report, but the report report separately based on our institution. Okay. So our institution was paid for an audit because we had so much turnover in the previous. Yeah. You know, all the coordinators we had last year turnover, and then we had turnover again. So that's why we have picked her and not. But then we talked to our coordinator. She was very nice. She's like, that is the reason. You don't know, need to be worried about your financial audit. So it's not going to be that. They just want to make sure that uh, what they are providing the funding for, we are using it and we are doing it the right way. Which we just submitted our new CLNA program, uh, like, sorry, document. Um, for the next four years. And even though it's a consortium, we are the host college and we did such a good job that state was really happy with that one. So they, they are happy to talk about that, but they just want to come and say, see what we are doing and how we are doing when we get our CPE program. And it's not going to be punitive. She already said that, which is a good thing. And uh, it's going to be, if they find any gaps, they're going to just suggest that how can we fix those gaps. But we are. Looking forward to like you know, the okay. yeah. Great. Uh, about the state, you know, and like, I don't know what it's like, it's degree. Yeah, I um, I haven't heard anything since our last conversation about it where they are often. Um, and I haven't heard on whether WSU was approved. Um, but I will note that and I'll I'll try to um I, I know that we, we as community college, strongly uh, share a strongly worded response to um, the advertisements uh, of that. But when that in one particular area, which is as far as no, it's because they have the qualifications. Yeah, they have yeah, hours, yeah. basically. It was like an automatic. Yeah. So, so she, yeah. it doesn't even, it, it's like our associates in general studies, yeah. it would be similar to that. But I don't know that, I, I'm, I don't know 100% certain because I haven't looked at that. But I would be, I would believe that it would be similar to that. But I don't even know that they would have the same stipulations that you, know, you don't have so much math history. Yeah. I think it's once you get to that 60 in our position, you're, you're getting associates to it. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for me? 13 minutes. That, that was awesome. With questions. I might I, I might just make a comment going back to the financial because I think you guys should be commended for the work that you did. But I also think that we keep our eyes on what it is. And the reason I asked that question about where we ended up is because it's pretty thin in my view. And I think you echoed that, Gina. And I know Dr. Pegler, you feel that way as well. So, I mean, it's it's good and it's positive news, but it's also, let's keep our eye out on the prize of where we're trying to get to, which is building up reserves. For three months, yeah. Yeah, it's not a, hey, we're out of the woods, let's. <laughs> our, our goal was to put at least 50 back in reserve, so we're still shy. I think that was our, that was. My goal. And, and again, I don't want to take away from it is very optimistic yes, yes. and an optimistic thing. And I appreciate again everything you guys have done. Because I know it's been a Herculean effort. So but
Sir, how, how long are we going to go? I, that I don't know. I'm open to suggestion. My watch has decided to just give it up. Now. <laughs> so, uh, how much just how long do you think we need for this executive session? Okay, can we get five to go to the bathroom first? Yeah, for sure. It stops. Yeah. All right, I move to adjourn the executive session for 20 minutes to be at the halfway hall. Well, they yeah, one, yeah, yeah. Uh, to discuss personal matters of non elected personnel as relates to discussion of identifiable personal personnel information of non elected personnel. <laughs> Personally, I don't think that's <laughs> and not expect. I second that. Second it. Old. Yes. 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 Rock. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Bartles Meyer. Yes. 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 It's in the room around the pocket. There's. Well, they made it for the church back.
Things that have an executive that will be returned, but we move the come out of the executive session. I'm second. Thank you. Is that done? Yes, uh, we're true. Yes. Yes. Arnold's Meyer. Yes. Oh, yes. Bailey. Yes. McKinnis. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I move to to adjourn the executive session for ten minutes. Fifteen. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. We discuss personal matters, but not in late. Uh, and the board invites Dr. Kegler and my members to identify the personal thing again for the first time. All second. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Our time. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. 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 I'm I'm going to be adjourned. I said. On the greatest I know. I know. You did good.